coming off their first losing season in 29 years, in his first year at Maryland, head coach Kevin Willard exceeded expectations. They opened the season 8-0 with big wins against Miami, a floundering Louisville team, and Illinois. They dropped a close one to a great Tennessee game and then got beat down by UCLA before they started league play. Maryland would go on to go 11-9 in conference, including big wins at home against Indiana and Purdue and Northwestern. They earned a trip to the NCAA tournament as an 8 seed. After a tight game against West Virginia, they caught up to a red-hot Alabama team in Birmingham who was just too much to handle. After the season ended, two players ran out of eligibility and six players transferred out. Most notably, their second leading scorer, Hakeem Hart. He had 11.4 points per game for the average this year, and then he left for Villanova. Their starting guard, Don Carey, ran out of eligibility. Add to that, the top two bench contributors, Ian Martinez, who had 5.7 points per game and left for Utah, and Patrick Emmeline, who had averaged 2.8 points per game, ran out of eligibility. Additionally, assistant coach Tony Skin took a head coaching gig at his alma mater in George Mason University, and Grant Bilmer took a head coaching job at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Now with eight roster spots to fill and two assistant coaches to hire, what can Coach Willard, who's known as a defensive-oriented coach with a strength in off-season player development, do going into year two? Remember, please like and subscribe. Kevin Willard summed up his basketball philosophy in a fun way. You ever see the movie Along Came Polly? Man, this, this generation is unbelievable. <laughs> Watch that movie. You'll see us. You will see a scene in that movie of, of the reason why I tell my team not to shoot. It's my favorite scene of any movie. Right. So I did a lot of thinking last night. And there's something I'm pretty excited about. What's up? Nice. Let it rain. Well, I feel like I might be ready to move on. You know, get my life back on track. So, I'm going to ask Polly Prince on a date. Oh, that's a mistake. She's not right for you, dude. Rain dance! Hey. Can you describe the scene a little bit? It's Ben Stiller and uh, the, the young man that, that died. Um, the blonde hair guy. Yeah, who? Phillips. Phillips, yeah. Um, they're playing two on two basketball in the park. and. Philip Seymour keeps on shooting the basketball and he keeps hitting the backboard, keeps hitting the backboard, throws it over the backboard, keeps missing. And every time he shoots it, he says, let it rain. <laughs> and ever since I saw that movie, I would make sure I'd never tell one of my players never to shoot the basketball because if Philip Seymour had that much confidence and I got to make sure my guys have that much confidence. But it's a great movie. Take it roll, take it roll. I'm burning. My lungs are burning. And if that's your head coach, who doesn't want to play for that guy? In the offseason, Maryland added Mike Jones as an assistant, who was most recently on the staff at Virginia Tech. And Greg Manning Jr. was promoted from director of basketball operations to assistant coach. And the two of them joined David Cox, who's entering his second year in the program. As for who Maryland will have on the court next year, in the front court, they'll have Jameer Young, a six foot one senior returning after starting every game he played last season. Young, who started his basketball career at UNC Charlotte, averaged 16.2 points, 3.3 assists, and 4.7 rebounds per game last season, while he shot 43% from the field and 32% from three. He's uniquely versatile at 6'1", and currently he is just one of 10 active NCAA players, with 1,900 points, 600 rebounds, and 350 assists in their career so far going into next year. 
He had a great first year at Maryland as he recorded nine 20 point games and had a slew of signature moments, including a game stealing three pointer late against Illinois that pushed the Terps record to 8 0 at the time and boosted them to their highest ranking of the season at number 13. Young's return is a massive step in the construction of the 23 24 season, as Young will retain his starting position at point guard for the team. Maryland adds freshman Jonathan Lamoth a 6'4", 180-pound combo guard from St. Francis Academy in Baltimore. A consensus four-star recruit, Maryland has struggled at times to keep homegrown talent in recent years. Lamoth was a highly touted recruit with 21 offers, according to 247 Sports, but he was certain that he wanted to be a Terrapin. Jahari Long, a 6'5 senior guard who followed his head coach last year from Seton Hall and came off the bench in 35 games, is returning for his senior year. And I'm not expecting to see a huge jump in production, but he'll definitely see the floor and I could see him going off in a game or two, especially early in the season. Deshaun Harris-Smith, a 6'5 incoming freshman guard, is the opposite of finesse. Although he might be capable of a little bit of that, he definitely has that bully in him. He plays at a high motor and has a physical, rugged style of play. He's the model of consistency. You know what you're going to get, and he gives it night in and night out. He's a supreme slasher who relentlessly imposes his will on the defense with an aggressive attack at the painted area. He places tremendous pressure on the half court and transition defenses. With much more than just brute strength, his attack is cerebral and calculated. He's always looking for a weakness in the defense, always looking for a driving lane to attack with purpose, inflicts the majority of his scoring uh, via points in the paint. He makes skilled use of his body to clear space, create separation, and initiate contact to draw the foul. He's not a natural shooter, leaning back on his release and shooting a harder ball. He's a four-star, highly touted recruit. I expect him to see the court early and work into the rotation, but he'll have some work to do, especially in his shooting game, if he wants to build into a solid player and eventually try to earn a starting role as his career goes on at Maryland. Now this one's unfortunate. Chance Stevens, a six foot three sophomore guard, suffered a ruptured patella tendon during a summer workout and just had knee surgery in June, and he could miss the entire 23-24 season. Stevens transferred to Maryland from Loyola Marymount in this offseason. In his lone season with the Lions, he averaged 17 minutes a game while shooting 37% from the three-point range. Hopefully his recovery goes well and he'll be someone to watch going into the 24 season. Noah Batchelor, a six foot six sophomore guard slash forward, who played in 22 games with one start as a true freshman, where he averaged 1.6 points and 1.2 rebounds with six assists and two steals. He was the first player signed by head coach Kevin Willard at Maryland. He's lauded as a marksman coming out of high school, but he struggled to find consistency shooting only 27.8% from the field and 25% from three last season. Given that Maryland's lack of perimeter shot making is a major weakness this season, those numbers need to improve. With an offseason of work and more playing time on its way, he stands to deliver on his reputation as a sharpshooter moving forward. Coach Willard has sung high praises of Noah and clearly sees him as a big piece on this team for years to come. I'd expect to see him on the court a lot this year and hopefully develop into a starting role, if not this season, but in years to come. Jamie Kaiser, a 6'6 freshman guard slash forward. Kaiser is a big body wing who incorporates both skill and physicality into his attack. A former football player, he's built with a broad upper body and high motor. His rate of improvement in recent years has been extremely high, particularly with his skill set. He's made himself into a good shooter with a high arcing ball and compact release that doesn't require much separation from his defender. He makes threes, pull-ups, and will take on smaller defenders in the mid post area at times. Kaiser will curl screens to get his shots. Seems that he has a good concept of floor spacing and maximizes the deep corners as a spot up shooter. He doesn't have ideal foot speed and is rarely going to blow right by a defender on the set, so he can sometimes settle for tough, contested shots when he's looking to create his own offense. Defensively, he's going to have an easier time switching up on the line because of his ability to body up bigger forwards than he will going down where his lateral quickness could be an issue covering a smaller guard. Overall, he plays very hard, has untapped upside, and he continues to maximize his foot speed and develop a game he could develop at a pretty rapid rate. I see him slotting as a solid bench player this year. Now at the forward spot, Dante Scott, a 6'8 senior who has been a starter for four years already. A deeply experienced player who averaged 11 points, 1.6 assists, 6 rebounds per game last season. Scott currently ranks 28th all-time at Maryland in scoring with 1,320 career points and 15th in career rebounds at 704. Scott drew consistent praise last offseason after trimming nearly 30 pounds as he stepped into a revamped role as a veteran. Willard said that last year the main focus with him was that he has a game that can play in the NBA, but he did not have the body that can play in the NBA, and he made changes. This year, his total focus in the offseason was to get his body in a place where he can play 35 minutes 
and 35 effective minutes at that. We've seen him be an effective starter for years. It'll be interesting to see where he finishes in the record books. I don't see him making the NBA right now, but anything is possible. I do see him carving out a nice long career overseas though. After three seasons at Indiana, Jordan Geronimo, a six foot six senior, transfers to Maryland. For three seasons, Geronimo played a backup role in 82 games with six starts, posting career averages of 3.8 points, 2.7 rebounds, and half a block per game. He shot 52.8% overall with a 31% three-point shooting percentage. In his junior year, still in a backup role off the bench, coupled with a dislocated finger and a calf injury, Geronimo had an inconsistent final season as a Hoosier. In the final 10 games, he scored just 11 total points with eight rebounds. His opportunities decreased too, playing six minutes or less in seven of the final 10 games. Geronimo's jump out of the gym athleticism made for a number of highlight reel dunks and critical rebounds, but the other areas of his game never fully developed. He wasn't a reliable ball handler on the perimeter, and his defense away from the rim was inconsistent. I assume he'll come off the bench behind Scott and Reese, but I wouldn't be shocked if he seizes his new opportunity and tries to compete for a good amount of playing time. And last at the forward spot, there's Julian Reese, a six foot nine junior forward who started 33 of 34 games, missing just one due to injury last year. He posted the third best single season field goal percentage in program history at 63%. He's developed into the one of the top big men in the league, averaging 11.4 points, second on the team, while leading the Terps with 7.2 rebounds per game. For the next level, his projected draft range is late second round to undrafted, He's a good low post scorer who excels at scoring off ball in motion. He's also an okay defender with a decent shot block, but he needs to improve his face-up game. And to be any real threat at the next level, he needs to expand his shooting range. He's not an elite rebounder, and he can be undisciplined on defense. I'd love to see him improve his defense this year and develop more of an outside shot, especially to stretch defenses. Maybe he could improve that draft stock. Now at the center position, Mady Troor, a 6'11 sophomore forward slash center, transfers in from New Mexico State. Originally from France, however, he attended high school at the National Christian Academy in Cumberland, Maryland. The big man played just seven games for New Mexico State in his freshman season. He scored a total of nine points and shot four from seven of the field. He's only a sophomore, giving the front court another long-term piece. I'd expect him to be a deep bench player or slight rotation player this year and grow into a bigger role next year. Although if Maryland doesn't play small at the center, I guess it could be wide open between him and Callum to see who would start. Callum Swatton Roger, a 6'11 sophomore center, played 21 games in his true freshman year, averaging in 3.7 minutes per contest and putting in just about a point per game and about one rebound. He is a high motor center who is extremely active around the rim and on the defensive end. He's very effective in the pick and roll situation because of his athleticism around the basket. He was only 220 pounds last year, so at 6'11", fans really are kind of hoping he puts on weight this offseason. If he comes in heavier, I could see him gain more playing time and be a pretty good presence down low. And finally, three-star center Braden Pierce, a 7-foot incoming freshman, joins the fold. He is relatively new to the game of basketball, only having played competitively in the last few years but he has athleticism and potential to be a difference maker in his college career. Standing at 7 foot 230 pounds, Pierce will be an additional option in the front court for the Terps. He'll play the five, but he sees himself more as someone who can stretch the field and shoot the three. Depending on how he acclimates to the D1, he could be an interesting piece next year, especially if he develops that outside game and could play a three or a four slash five role for Maryland. Maryland lost veteran starters Hakeem Hart and Don Carey, who played major minutes on the wing last year. Hart and Carey led Maryland starters in three-point percentage, and their departure creates some concern for a team that finished 8th in the Big Ten in three-point percentage at 32.8%, and 10th in total three-pointers made at 233. Maryland won't have a shortage of replacement options, but with Loyola Marymount transfer Chance Stevens going down with a knee injury, that leaves a trio of three freshman guards, Deshaun Harris-Smith, Jamie Kaiser, and Jonathan Lamothe to step up. Stevens shot 37.4% from three-point range, and he will be missed. Maryland's apparent lack of depth puts pressure on these newcomers to contribute right away. Jameer Young and Julian Reese enter the season as one of the Big Ten's top point guard center duos. Young's quickness is tough to contain, and he's earned second team all Big Ten honors last year, with past all Big Ten forwards like Trace Jackson Davis, Hunter Dickinson, and others all gone. Reese should be in the running for first or second team all Big Ten this year. Don't be surprised to see him on the Big Ten all defensive team either. Maryland also brings in two freshmen ranked in the top 10, among Big Ten recruits, Deshaun Harris-Smith and Jamie Kaiser. 
which could help the program's growth under year two for Kevin Willard. This team was a surprise NCAA team last year and have found themselves projected opening the year within the top 25. Willard established an interesting identity that clashed with the mostly stodgy, plotting Big Ten that bodes well as the Terps' talent level increases. Following the 22-23 season, Coach Willard became the first coach in program history to guide the Terps to a 20-plus win season, national ranking, and trip to the NCAA tournament during their first year of a coach's tenure at Maryland. Maryland fans really should be excited for the season. I mean, they should be excited for the team in general. It seems like Willard really has the team on an upswing, and I could see this team with a floor of maybe the second round. At minimum, the floor is making the NCAA. I mean, once you get to March, you really no, have no idea what's going to happen. That's why it's March Madness. But this will be a good year for Maryland, as long as nothing goes wrong injury-wise. And I would have faith in Coach Willard in years to come for the program. Good luck, Terps.